I'm calling the meeting to order of the Zoning and Land Regulation Committee. The first item on the agenda is public comment for any matter not on the agenda. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on an item not on our agenda this evening? Okay, seeing so none, I'll go on. Thank you. Before we continue with the meeting, I'd like to make introductions of the committee. To my right is Supervisor Jerry Bullock, and to my left is Supervisor Dennis R. Laughlin. Um, Supervisor Patrick Miles is excused, and I anticipate um, Supervisor Matano will be joining us soon. We have Zoning Administrator Roger Lane, Assistant Zoning Administrator Don Dan Everson, and Director of Public Planning and Development, Todd Violante. This be Monday and time change. Youth Governance member here is Harry Joseph Finkelmeyer. Good to see you here. This meeting is a ZLR committee work meeting. Public meetings have already been held at previously for the items listed on the agenda. The committee will not be taking public testimony on these agenda items. However, committee members may call upon persons to speak on an item on the agenda if there are any questions or concerns. When a petition is called, county staff will update the committee on the status of the petition. The committee members may have concerns or questions after discussion. A decision may be rendered. If a zoning petition is acted upon, it will be placed on the next county board meeting for action, which is November 17th. If a conditional use permit is acted upon, it is the county's final action on the matter. The ZLR next committee meeting is on November 22nd. Next on our agenda is a consideration of minutes. We have the minutes from the October 10th meeting and from the October 25th meeting. I'll move both uh, the meetings of October 10th and the meeting, the minutes of the October 25th meeting. I'll second both. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th and October 25th. Welcome, Supervisor Matano. Do you want us to wait on the minutes? I will vote on the minutes. Ready? Okay. Yeah. All right, all in favor of approval of the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, and the minutes are approved. Uh, next item is petition for a rezone 11,020 from Jeffrey R. Netvig in the town of Cottage Grove. Roger. Uh, this petition was postponed at the August 23rd ZLR committee. The petition was postponed due to no town action. The reason why there was no town action, the landowners, uh, it, it allowed the landowners time to revise the zoning request in order to correct land division violation. Um, since that time, uh, the petition has been revised to rezone all respective properties to the correct zoning district and allow the exchange of lands between property owners. The two ward properties were consolidated in, into uh, one parcel uh, and the southerly lot line shifted to line with the existing tree line that they thought was on their property. Uh, the um, property will be uh, as assigned the appropriate zoning district. The two NatVig properties are going to be consolidated into a single property. There's also going to be a 66-foot strip of land that's in between the Ward property and the NatVig property that will be sold to Holbert so he could um, uh, have his driveway in that area. Um, so since since the uh, public hearing, the town has approved the petition with amendments. Staff suggests conditions. The petition shall be amended to assign the zoning district classification of R1 to a 3.4 acre pro property owned by the words. Assign a zoning district classification of RH-2 to a 7.2 acre property owned by NADVIG, and then assign the zoning classification to RH-4 to the newly configured 16.2 acre Hulbert property. I, uh, are the words here tonight? Uh, no, they're not. Okay. Um, 
Then I'll move that we approve this petition with the town and staff conditions. Amendments. Amendments. Second. Okay, discussion on the motion to approve with town and staff amendments. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And it is approved. Okay. Next item is rezone 11,048, Elizabeth Lightfoot, also in the town of Cottage Grove. This petition was postponed at the October 25th DLR committee due to public opposition. Tom Payne and Randy Payne were opposed to the petition, expressed concerns regarding stormwater management, access for emergency vehicles, and activities regarding retail sales. With regards to the stormwater management plan, there were concerns raised uh, regarding the runoff. And I conducted an inspection on the property. The All of the, everything is sloped towards uh, the agricultural field owned by the Lightfoot. So everything basically, and you can see the natural contours, everything comes out, sheds off to this, and then goes through the field, and there's really no swale or anything, just the natural drainage all kind of funnels everything from this area to a point where there is a culvert. The culvert goes underneath uh, the roadways here, and another culvert goes in on uh, culvert here and then there is a drainage swale that's right here that you can see going down so there is a proper area for uh, stormwater management it's actually very flat and when you get to and I also inside your report uh, you can see that there is a, an adequate pathway for all these stormwater management and uh, the uh, cul-de-sac area is really flat. It is probably 1% grade, if that. Um, so uh, staff, uh, it appears uh, to staff that adequate measures are in place to handle storm water um, uh, to support the driveway. Access for emergency vehicles. Um, we did take a look uh, at the property. This is a, a shot of uh, a pickup truck uh, that's actually the zoning pickup truck on the existing driveway. Uh, so it seems like uh, two cars could pass, no problem. Uh, but also, uh, uh, Ms. Lightfoot is uh, also going to put uh, bump outs in two locations so that it will widen just in case uh, a, a large uh, fire truck or something like that would happen to uh, come down uh, the way. Uh, that was part of the town approvals to install those bump outs. Uh, one of the conditions is that the bump outs be installed uh, within a year. Um, uh, also note that the Maintenance uh, of the private drive is performed exclusively by Ms. Lightfoot uh, due to the pain's refusal in participating in the costs. Uh, activities regarding rail, uh, retail sales. Uh, the town has placed a deed restriction on this property. Uh, it's, the retail sales are limited to nursery stock produced on the property and then also um, they also uh, requested that bag, soil, compost, and fertilizer uh, be uh, added to that list so that just to have supplemental stuff for that, but no picks or shovels or Christmas decorations or anything like that. It's just exclusively to the, um, uh, the nursery stock grown on the farm and staff is suggesting the following conditions uh, to address the neighborhood concerns that a deed restriction at, as required, let's see, that the deed restriction that's previously on the property uh, be revised to allow the following land uses in the A, B, and C1 zoning districts, which are retail sales limited to nursery stock, bag soil, compost, and fertilizer, and the operation of a landscape and gardening business. Also, 
Um, the second condition would be the private drive be improved by adding two bump outs as specified on the plans and resurfaced, uh, uh, resurfacing the driveway with crushed asphalt and that improvement shall be installed within a year. And Ms. Lightfoot is here if you have any questions. Correct. Uh, Ms. Lightfoot is here and is available if the committee has any questions or follow up. And uh, Becky Keelstrup also is registering in support, available to speak. And Daniel Schmidt is also registering to speak in support. I'd like to hear from Mrs. Lightfoot, please. <coughs> How are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good. Are you uh, agreeable with the staff in town conditions? That's exactly what we're asking for. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Roger, what is the follow-up going to be regarding the bump ups since those aren't installed yet? Will there be follow-up by staff? Or yes, just? yes. Okay, all right. As part of that, we'll put it into uh, our Acela system, and Jekyller will come up in a year. Okay, thank you. May I ask a question? Do we, does it require a permit at all? Um, I don't believe so. You may want to check with Land and Water Resources about erosion control, uh, but since you are not disturbing more than 4,000 square feet, I don't believe you need to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sorry, did that's just before you said uh -huh. go away. Did anyone else have any questions yeah. for this? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions for anybody else? Did, uh, would anybody else like to make a comment about this petition? Since you're here, okay. I have one question, if I may. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Lightfoot, have you um, shared your uh, conditions mm -hmm. that we have placed on your petition with uh, Tom and Randy Payne? Um, no, I have not. Have you talked to them? I have not. Okay. Right. And uh, they're aware that tonight we have a meeting whether we're going to approve you or not, I'm sure. Well, uh, uh, they, they were aware at the last meeting that the <coughs> meeting was forwarded to tonight. tonight. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to move approval with conditions of both the uh, town and the park staff. Yeah, and staff. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve with town and staff um, conditions. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> Seeing none, it's approved. Okay, next, plats and certified survey maps. Yeah, the first two uh, plats are final plats uh, located within uh, the city of Sun Prairie and uh, Fitchburg. Uh, they're before you for a certification of non-objection. First one is West Prairie Village, second edition, city of Sun Prairie. Uh, this plat consists of 55 lots, uh, just a little under 16 acres. As far as parkways, you have uh, West Main Street and South Grand Avenue. As far as uh, major corridors, you have U.S. Highway 151 to the south, and then uh, drainage arrows are shown indicating uh, surface runoff. And schools are established. I'll move we do not object. Second. We have a motion for non certification of non objection. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And it is approved. Uh, in addition to Nine Springs. Yeah, this one's in the city of Fitchburg, just east of uh, Sherrill Parkway. Consists of seven lots, a little over 20 acres. Uh, as far as parks go, there are none shown. Uh, parkways, you have East Sherrill Parkway being extended to the east. Uh, major highways, you have Highway 14 to the east. And uh, there is a private stormwater management and easement area shown on Outlot 33. Schools are established, and then there's a Stoner Elementary School to the east. Moving on objection. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion for a certification of non objection. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, it's approved. Certified non objection. 
And uh, final plat for Viney's addition to Sky High. Yeah, this is uh, the final plat located in the town of Connors Grove, just off of Highway N, uh, Section 21. Uh, the zoning petition 10,992 has been approved uh, from an agricultural district to R2 to allow for the single family uh, residential uses. Uh, staff, senior planner staff, uh, Andros has looked at the comp plan. There's, uh, there's no, uh, it is consistent with the land use plan for the town of Cottage Grove and Dane County. I've outlined uh, the conditions of the rezone in uh, number two there. Uh, as far as public park land is, uh, goes, the developer will be paying park fees in lieu of to the township. Uh, outlot one will be dedicated to the public for stormwater uh, pond management. And uh, Bass Road is being extended to the east, and Vinnie's Trail is a new road to the south or to the north, serving lot one. There is just one little issue with uh, the county surveyor, the road name. And the, otherwise, those have been uh, the road names have been approved. Um, and then number six, a suitable turnaround shall be installed at the end of Vinnie's Trail that meets the specifications or requirements of the town of Cottage Grove. I've had conversations with uh, the town officials, and they're okay with that condition as well. Um, and then the other conditions are standard. Supervisor Lawson. Is this well and septic, or is this sewer? Yes. Yeah, this well is well and septic. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 22,000 feet, we can have adequate. Space yeah, the minimum lot size by the by the zoning code is twenty thousand square feet, and hundred feet of lot width. So they're just slightly above that average. Staff did have conversations with them about uh, the size of the lots <coughs> being very tight. So uh, they're going to be rather small houses because it's going to be hard to fit a uh, a septic system, uh, backup system, the well, and the house. All on the same side. That's where I was going. <laughs> the original uh, plat that was uh, uh, the, f the first go around actually had one more lot. It did take one lot out of this. <coughs> so just to make a spread bit, them out a little bit. Yeah, just to make a little bit more room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that, <clears throat> I'm familiar with the neighborhood where. 22, 23, 24,000 square feet, septic fails, and they got to go to a, a, a mon system. <coughs> Sometimes they have to get approval from your neighbor. It's, it, it can become you know, hectic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they have to show an alternate location or a secondary absorption field I think when they right. apply for the, right. the sanitary permit. And so they've got to show the, the plumber. The developer have to show some type of uh, additional space in, in the rear case. yard. Yep. yep. Good. Thank you. Make a motion to approve. Second. So we have a motion to approve the final and a second. All in favor, or actually uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed. And it's approved. Uh, we don't have resolutions. We have an ordinance minute we'll talk about um, on other business. Report to the committee uh, because of some... Anyway, I'll just let Roger go ahead and talk on uh, 465. Bay County Zoning Division received a complaint regarding the Oak Park Quarry lodged by uh, um, a town supervisor, uh, Brian Banger, um, basically stated that Administrator Lane on October 21st, John Halverson Trucking violated weight limits on Oak Park Road using the road from, uh, from the north to, um, to the quarry, or picked up a full load of gravel that appeared to have nothing when it went in, but the truck is over the posted limits even when empty. Um, by the uh, pictures that Mr. Bering Beringer uh, sent the committee, as well as uh, it appeared that the um, the truck uh, turned south onto um, Oak Park Road after leaving it and went down to 12 and 18. Uh, and
and then it also states October 26th, uh, including uh, after work, after the workday was over, there's a substantial amount of gravel from the quarry left on the public road. Here's the pictures that uh, were sent. There is the truck with a load of gravel from the mineral extraction operation. And this is the gravel that was on the road. In response, Dean County Zoning Division conducted an inspection on the complaint. First, we requested Mr. Beringer supply us with any pictures, which he did. Uh, that would provide documentation of the actions. And then on, on November 2nd, an inspection was conducted at the quarry and the town patrolman interviewed. So when we, I called uh, Al Pulvermacher and to verify the weight limits on Oak Park Road, asked him if he had uh, received any complaints regarding uh, uh, road limits. Um, uh, he stated he didn't, however, he stated that Mr. Beringer has been complaining about semi-trailers hauling harvested corn on various other roads with weight limits. Um, the, rope, the weight limit for Oak Park Road uh, is a 10 ton weight limit, uh, and there are some agreements with the uh, town and John Halverson regarding uh, upkeep of the road and allowing uh, trucks to uh, travel on Oak Park Road uh, from the entrance south to 12 and 18. So that's, uh, it is in place. The um, gravel on the public road, an inspection was conducted on November t uh, 2nd, which was uh, you know, about uh, 24 hours after. You could see that the, the road is clear. Uh, and this is, so I could not see where any uh, significant amounts of gravel were dumped on the road or still on the road. So within 24 hours, it apparently it was cleaned up or something like that. Um, so we did, we did not find that to be a significant uh, uh, violation. Uh, with these two violations, uh, um, we did not find that uh, any of the conditions of approval for conditional use permit uh, 2103 were being violated. Uh, since that time, Mr. Beringer has been uh, uh, writing emails with regards uh, disputing the fact, uh, basically stating that the zoning division is not doing their job, um, that we're siding only with the quarry operator uh, that um, we are not paying enough attention to this mineral extraction operation. Uh, quite frankly, I, um, I've been working with Mr. Beringer for uh, five years since he has owned his property. Um, I, you know, it's, the fact is sad that he purchased a house within a thousand feet of an active quarry um, once he learned it was an active quarry, he uh, filed a lawsuit against the previous owner and the real estate agent, and that did not uh, come to any avail. avail. And, and then since that time, there has just been a consistent barrage of complaints regarding that, and Dane County Zoning Division has been responding to those uh, each time. Uh, the mineral extraction operator uh, wanted to have this quarry deemed a, uh, a non-conforming uh, quarry, which would allow them to truck 24-7 and blast whenever they would like. Uh, the Dane County Zoning Division uh, felt uh, uh, that it was not a non-conforming site, and we went through the process um, all the way through circuit court with regards to this, saying that it is not uh, a non-conforming site. Um, Dane County Zoning Division has been working with the town on this significantly, uh, with uh, bringing uh, the operator into compliance uh, and uh, trying to work out to maintain uh, 
the need for quarry and having a quarry operation, uh, and also with regards to the uh, neighbors. Uh, I have uh, talked with uh, uh, Chair Schlobaum with regards uh, to the quarry. He does not have a problem with the quarry being there. Uh, also, Supervisor Dennis Madge is here uh, with regards, and he could also speak uh, with regards to uh, any town uh, comments. Anything else? Oh, okay, thank you very much. Also, um, we do have registered this evening, as um, Rogers pointed out, Supervisor Dennis Mant is here, as is Supervisor Brian Benninger and Martha Benninger are here. Questions for Roger or any of the town of Deerfield residents? I have a question. For? Uh, uh, for Roger. Um, Roger, how much time have you and your staff put in on this continuing issue? Do you have a Responding to complaints or the violations and the non-conforming stuff? Put them all together. Put them all together. Probably six to eight hundred man hours. Six to eight hundred man hours? Mm -hmm. Over the last five years. All right, may I ask? Go ahead. May I ask Dennis? Supervisor Mann, please come on up. <coughs> Has the town addressed the issues that you're hearing tonight? Um, not these recent ones. Um, this is a, I just heard of this two or three days ago, and I got the, the form that there's going to be a meeting tonight, so... I came to be present to kind of find out what was going on. No one else on the board is aware of this complaint. Okay. So it's not a, it's not um, in the town board's uh, interest or I guess we're, we're, Brian is not representing the town board. Right, right. He's, I, I guess. <laughs> How do you respond to our zoning department when they say they spent six to eight hundred hours on this issue? I have got to applaud the zoning department because I think they went above and beyond to help us out okay. out in the town of Deerfield, okay. and I'm I'm happy with you. Okay, right. Th thank you very much. Thank okay. you. All. I don't have any further questions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Other supervisors, any questions? Um, Supervising the town? I think I will uh, start with a question for Roger. How does one determine the weight of a truck? So, I mean, we start out with a photograph of a truck, and I don't, I don't know how much a truck weighs, but you must know more than I do. Mm -hmm. um, well, they are 10 ton trucks, uh, and so they're going to be at least 10 ton of aggregate. I, they, they, hold 26, 22 to 26 cubic yards of gravel. So when you do that, it's approximately 10 ton. And then a 10-wheeled axle probably goes, I'm going to have to say 9,000 pounds. Of, um, so you're looking at you know, 20,000. No, no, 8,000, no, probably 8,000, 9,000 9, pounds. So uh, 14,000 pounds total with a loaded truck. That's not even close. Brian? Well, let me, I'll ask Brian the question. Then. So wait, so you said it's a 10 ton truck? That's correct. Plus the gravel? No, the, uh, the load is 10 ton. Okay. I, I mean, I just don't know anything about trucks. Well, let me ask um, Brian. Yes. Okay. Sure. <coughs> so why don't I start with the question I just asked about the weight of trucks. Yes. Like no expertise in truck weights. So you saw a truck and you said it was overweight. So explain. Right. Well, it's a class of truck. And, and they start at 20,000 pounds. Generally, they're about 25 to 30,000 pounds empty. 
Say That's the common class of truck used at you know major cores like like this one. And we're and we're switching back and forth between tons and and pounds. So twenty thousand. Twenty-five to thirty thousand pounds empty. Right. And that's just that class of truck. Yes. <coughs> and the weight limit is ten tons. It's just. So that's twenty thousand pounds. Right. Um, when these trucks are laden, they're fifty, sixty thousand pounds. Are 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 you? So what would you? So if the weight limit is ten thousand. 10 tons and these trucks empty way more than that, what should they be using instead, smaller trucks? They get to use uh, Oak Park Road to the south of the quarry. Right. That's allowed for in the CUP, but that's it. So what happened here? They went north of the quarry? They came from the north to get a load, right? So they were over the weight limit, empty, coming from the north to the quarry. It's not uncommon, it's just that this is the holder of the CUP. Right. I have actually mentioned others, and I work with Al Palbermacher on weight limits in general on right. the roads. And I, you did receive an e email from me explaining exactly what I've done or not done with regard to uh, trucks hauling corn. There was one property. The other are, are overweight dump trucks, and sometimes we have overweight semis, you know, sleeper semis like Holland used to come through. We got them stopped um, with help from uh, deputies and the state patrol. It's a pretty serious issue. It became an issue a year ago because uh, there was an interchange project on Highway 73 at 1218, sure. just outside of Deerfield. And then t I Oak Park became the cut through route, and they got used to it. And so many of them don't want to give it up. But the dump truck traffic was a problem before that. So while you're here in our becoming up close and personal with this particular quarry, the issue then was the blasting. Yes. Can you give us an update on the status of the blasting? No blasting since uh, last November, uh, since last December, early December, when uh, Supervisor Saloff and another committee member, I forget who it was, asked if the quarry would consider <coughs> Ceasing blasting. Right. There's been nothing since. Okay. Thanks for that. Sure. So, uh, tell me. I have a comment on. I'm a truck mechanic by trade. Um, I've been working for the Dane County Highway Department for 15 years, and I remember when I worked at Wisconsin Kenworth. Usually, the EW weight, empty weight, that stands for. On most quad axles, I thought it was around 18,000 pounds or 19,000. So you can usually tell what the empty weight of a truck is by looking at that on the door. So that is one way you could find out if it's uh, right. what the weight is. But 30,000 sounds it's, awful heavy. I said 25 to 30. There, there are some that are as light as 20 and nearing 20, sure, but that's, that's not common. I mean, one the other day, 29,000 pounds empty. It was a Kenworth. You I saw remember. it on the door? You got it. You bet. Okay, it is um, on the door. I'm going to get us back to yes. when you're actually talking about um, uh, the quarry. And um, we've heard good questions about truck limits. But um, I'd like to just get us, the committee, back to a complaint about the Oak Park quarry. Um, Supervisor Montano, you had more questions? No, I, I think I'm as far along as I'll get for the moment. I'll Could I address an inaccuracy in the in the uh, as the complaint was complaint uh, explained? We just want to. Um, we understand that you have a complaint. Well, my question is: it wasn't um, accurate Have you actually you, asked this of the town? Have you brought this complaint of the town road use and the weight limits to the town? Yes, but not recently. <clears throat> this. Um, okay. Chairman uh, Schlobaum, to mention Chairman Schlobaum as, uh, as uh, being all right with uh, the quarry, Chairman Schlobaum must recuse himself because he does significant business with the quarry. He can't even be weighing in legally with his opinion. Okay, and, I, and um, his you've been signing your emails as roof. supervisor, so are you, are you representing the town as a town supervisor or are you representing yourself in your emails? Well, I'm a town supervisor who, who uh, lives in a location where I happen to see overweight traffic. 
you know, and so I'm, I didn't check the form that I'm representing the town because the town may or may not know I was here. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, a citizen who sees this happening, and now I happen to be an elected official as well. Okay. Supervisor Bullock. Yes, Roger. Is Oak Park Road a town road or a county road? It is a town road. So this is clearly a town jurisdiction issue. Right? That is correct. We have no authority on okay. town roads. I don't think we need to Actually, it's, it's in the CUP. It is, it's actually designate, designated the route on the, in the CUP. And the CUP condition, uh, standard number six, which is on page three, says that all applicable laws must be obeyed. So it's actually in the CUP, on the CUP in two ways. So it is in your jurisdiction. Okay. I, uh, if, if I can make a point of clarification, there is uh, one um, under the condition of approval. Um, it states that hauling route will be Oak Park Road South to U.S. Highway 12. So one would beg to differ if, if it was in a court of law. Uh, the hauling route would be full, going south. Um, there was one truck that Mr. Beringer saw coming from the north, empty into the quarry, and hauling the gravel south on Oak Park Road to U.S. Highway 12. Okay, well, thank you. Supervisor O'Loughlin. So, are we, are we here taking up this committee's time about one truck coming north on Oak Park Road departing south with the load? That's one issue I want to ask you about. And the second issue is I'm not <coughs> hearing anything, any issues about the quarry. It seems to be it's the one truck that came north, down from the north. So this is a quarry. This, this truck is owned by the quarry. That's, that's why it's more significant. I don't follow that. What do you mean? It's John Halverson Trucking. Okay. He is, he is the CUP holder at the time. Okay. So you saw one truck coming from the north, empty, leave from the quarry, loaded, and legally go south on Oak Park Road. It went illegally into the quarry, though. It's still a violation. I am I think we're cutting hairs here. I don't see how. A violation's a violation. Do you have a question? Um, I understand you have some animosity with the quarry. I mean, you know, you're about to lose a lawsuit right here. Um, that, was, that wasn't properly stated either. Actually, um, with the previous owners of the house, they left us a mouse infestation yeah. and left the windows every, open every time we visited. That's actually what we took them to court on. Okay. Thank you for You're quite welcome. Supervisors, other questions for anyone? No. Staff or? No. no. All members present. I just want to make a comment. I, Roger, were you the one that dealt with all these complaints? Uh, myself and Danny Verson. Okay, I want to commend both of you for all yeah. your work on this. Madam Chair, may I have an opportunity to defend myself because Roger Lane levied some uh, uh, allegations against me. Oh, that Mr. Berenger, hold on a second. And um, I think supervisors, would, do you, you know, have any good motions to clear the record? or action that you recommend? I'm not going to recommend any action. Any action? No. Okay, then um, what we've had this evening is uh, that you have sent us a complaint. You have sent it via email, and you have had an opportunity didn't address tonight the road part to of the speak. And um, I hear that uh, Roger was we have heard wasn't it. honest with you we about the road part of the complaint. We have your um, document that was previously submitted, so we have this a part of if, our record. If you read my document, before. you know that what Roger so. told you about the road cannot be even correct. Okay, thank you. All right, next Why item is this? our um, report of approved CSMs. Thank you. I didn't print off a hard copy for myself, but 
These are the ones that have been updated as of last Thursday. I have signed them. They are recorded for the Register of Deeds. They're good to go. No, any questions? No, no. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <coughs> okay, uh, next is our, um, we've talked about this at a couple of meetings, and we have the memo regarding the CUP, CUP appeal process. Well, the last time we had a few discussions, we are going to provide an opportunity for the DCCA to input on the subject of uh, amending the ordinances with regards to appealing conditional use permits. The um, It was reviewed on October 19th by the Dane County Towns Association. They suggested that an appeal should go to the Board of Adjustment prior to circuit court. Um, Right now, the, the ordinance states that it goes to the county board. Um, but with it going to the Board of Adjustment, the process would be similar to a uh, majority of the counties in the state, and the staff has revised the ordinance amendment to reflect the suggestion. So this is, uh, this ordinance is ready, almost ready to be uh, introduced to the, with the changes on uh, line 48 instead of having it uh, go to the uh, circuit court for certiorari review, it'll go down to the Board of Adjustment within 30 days of the final decision. And so um, Corporation Council just needs to make those revisions and they could be introduced by any supervisor at that time. I think it's well done. Yes, I like, I like the changes a lot. Thank you. Supervisor McConnell, do you have any? No, I'm, I'm Personally, somewhat unfamiliar with the Board of Adjustment. No, it's it to the food chain, so I'll, I'll confess ignorance. Okay, I could okay. go ahead. Oh, um, with any uh, administrative decision or variance, the Board of Adjustment, uh, uh, any person aggrieved by any decision uh, can go to the Board of Adjustment. It's uh, uh, five members, all uh, town members. Uh, Medina, Barry, Pleasant Springs. Mm -hmm. I, so, I say if uh, somebody came in asking for a waiver of the 66 foot frontage requirement and we denied it, they could appeal to that? That's correct. Yeah. Um, yes, any decision uh, by a committee, uh, administrative officer. So it's um, basically a peer group of towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a peer group of towns. Yeah. Um, we send them to uh, Board of Adjustment School every year <laughs> so <laughs> to keep them very sharp. Uh, they're extremely knowledgeable. Um, I have uh, uh, taken, well, uh, people were aggrieved with decisions. Uh, sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But I respect, uh, um, I uh, hold them in great uh, regards. They do a magnificent job and sort through um, um, the minutia of uh, how the decision was made uh, very, very precisely. Good. And Dane County Towns Association um, made, rec made this recommendation. Too. Uh, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. They endorsed it. <coughs> and then, as I understand it, then there's another level that you can go to. So if, if you do want to appeal, if you don't like the decision of the Board Adjustments, you can go to the uh, Court review. next, then, instead of going mm -hmm. skipping the... Yep. So once a, a decision is rendered, then um, the Board of Adjustment and a judge uh, in Circuit Court is reviewing the record to make sure that there was uh, no arbitrary or capricious uh, decisions made and the rules were followed. Oh, and I thought of another question. Can, under this ordinance, would it take a simple majority of the Board of Adjustment to reverse a decision? That is correct. That might be, that, that leaves me a little uncomfortable just from the point of view of the county board. We have this very, very difficult hill to climb in terms of a three quarters majority, a three to two. One never knows with a small bond. Well, no new information will be introduced. That's the thing. They are looking at it from the perspective of if they were sitting in 
that committee's uh, shoes and looking at all those facts, have they made the appropriate decision based on the facts that were in front of them at that time? So that's specified it's not a de novo review, it's a... That is correct. Okay. It's still just like basically a three to two by this body could be reversed by a three to two by that body. It's, it seems somewhat, in a way it's less, it's an easier hill to climb than the current system. And the current system it is almost a, a sham because it's almost impossible to get the county board to agree on a three quarters majority. <laughs> something with any controversy, but three to two on the, you know, not knowing the Board of Adjustment members, we could say, you know, on balance, we're going to deny the CUP for the quarry, and then they go to the Board of Adjustment, and the Board of Adjustment say, well, three to two, we approve, so. Then this committee or the county has a opportunity to uh, look at uh, have the circuit court look at the Board of Adjustments decision uh, through certiorari review. So <laughs> it does go up the chain and it could go back and forth. I guess that's back and forth is not a desirable outcome. Just hypothetically, since I'm not talking about any actual litigation, I'm just like looking at it. It's like, instead of being like it is currently where we we're the final arbiter, but there's this very, very difficult appeals process, and then you can go to the court. This would substitute that for a relatively simple appeals process, at least in your the, the Towns Association felt that it, it, it's less expensive to go to the Board of Adjustment, uh, so they wanted that opportunity in case um, an applicant or uh, a person that was opposed to the decision uh, had an opportunity to have the facts looked at uh, for a second time. Well, I'm just saying it's understandable what they think. It's just a question of whether it protects our interests. But I'll just throw that out there. Um, you know, it's not, we're not voting on it today, so I'll just leave those thoughts out there. Okay, thank you. Further comments or questions? I know that Supervisor Miles had said he was going to introduce this resolution. He's not able to be here this evening, and you're going to get us a final copy, a final draft, I should say, from the Court Council. That's correct. When can this be introduced, Roger? It could. I think we're running out of time for this year. Well, November 17th. It could possibly. That's the next the county board meeting. One. Any other questions about this proposal? <laughs> Amendment. So now we'll move on to our next item, which is changing our rules. There, uh, with the uh, committee's rules, there's absolutely nothing about how information is introduced to the committee. Um, we did take this uh, change to the Dane County Towns Association and had suggested it be a good idea for towns to also adopt um, um, information what is to the official record, what is in uh, the packet for the ZLR committee uh, to uh, make decisions on. One of the things is that uh, um, all written, or uh, and this uh, came from Corporation Council, uh, because there were some issues uh, with past um, uh, conditional use permits of uh, information um, introduced inappropriately. Um, so with the uh, rules and procedures, uh, having uh, what is the official record, and that uh, doesn't mean that emails cannot be sent uh, to committees but uh, members because some information could be sent to one committee member, some could be sent to all committee members and we really don't know so it be becomes this breakdown of a passing of information uh, so that uh, for part of the official record that will be reviewed by certiorari uh, that 
It would be composed of the following sources of information, all written or documentary evidence submitted to the committee at the public hearing and received by the chair. Uh, if uh, on uh, subsequent meetings, it'll be up to the chair to decide or the committee to decide whether or not to uh, place additional uh, evidence into the official record. Uh, a testimony, uh, also any testimony that is heard by the committee during the public hearing, that is part of the record. Uh, transcripts will be uh, written of the uh, recording and that would be part of the official record. The uh, chair would have the discretion to exclude evidence that is redundant, immaterial, or irrelevant uh, to the application. For instance, we had one Great. person submit the entire zoning code uh, to us with regards to uh, evidence. Um, we all have access to that, so that would be something that would be irrelevant uh, because it's right on our website and it's common knowledge. Everyone has that, uh, the Dane County Code of Ordinance book. Um, having materials submitted on uh, no larger than 11 by 17 inches. We've had posters, we've had a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I even had a, a jar of dirt uh, submitted as testimony. It's kind of hard to copy that and have that part of certiorari review. So it just uh, informs people and then, you know, this information would be put on the website just so everybody knows. Bring your information to the committee. Yes, you could distribute it beforehand and everything like that, but if you want it part of the official record, be present, submit it. Um, uh, any information in any form which is presented outside public hearings is not part of the record. The material may not be submitted by email for inclusion in the record. It does not prevent any uh, member of the public to distribute that, uh, distri distribute information to all the uh, committee members uh, at the next meeting. The committee members may want to uh, introduce that as part of the official record, but just by emailing it to a committee member does not constitute it's going to be part of the public record uh, because some committee members get it, some committee members don't, sometimes staff does, has, does not have the ability to uh, receive the email and put that into the record so it became very jumbled and um, it confuses what is the actual public record, what everybody is looking at to make a decision. Uh, and then the last thing is, uh, once a public hearing is conducted, no additional evidence or testimony will be received into the record except authorized by the chair at a future meeting. So uh, it does give that flexibility to put more information in, uh, but it definitely uh, makes a clear decision on what is going to be constituted part of, of the official public record. Uh, there was also another suggestion having uh, sworn uh, statements from or taking sworn testimony. Uh, there are some uh, counties that do that, take sworn testimony or any person that uh, is uh, speaking in support or opposition. Uh, they swear to tell the truth, so it's documented. So that might be, I think maybe that's going a little overboard, but uh, uh, that's a, a one other item that uh, other counties are doing. Is there a Bible involved? There could be. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Mutom. Um, I, I like where this is heading in general. I mm -hmm. think it cleans up our process a bit and clarifies what the record is and what the record is not. Um, I agree that we've received a lot of emails over time and to the extent that, well, certainly in the court case overturning our decision on the um, Albion quarry, it, it seemed like they, they kind of cherry-picked a few things and mm -hmm. I felt like we ran a very diligent process and staff ran a very diligent process. They, they made a very good point because it was difficult to right. capture yes, a little over 500 pages material. Right. But um, the, the one place I was 
starting to, in my head, wordsmith was paragraph F. Um, the subset of thing is that it's a bit of a run on, and the, uh, if you end the sentence at the chair at a future meeting in the very middle, and then the second half might be like a separate clause, like F, um, F1 and F2 or something. Okay. And the good, good cause for the information not to be presented at a public hearing is, is kind of awkwardly stated in that um, in terms of just plain old words, it's, it's sort of looking back to the, the public hearing. So, but then going back to the process, what we did in the Albion case that I was somewhat uncomfortable with in the long run was that we held a public hearing and then we held multiple, like four or five more meetings on it. Mm -hmm. And so then, because we have the rule that at, at a work meeting people can't testify, we were really developing a record but excluding testimony from the opponents. So uh, that statement on a practical level, forgetting about grammar, um, the idea that, say, if you have a public hearing on September 1 and then a work meeting two months later and a third, you know, another work meeting two months after that and a third work meeting, we were developing a, a narrative on that quarry where we didn't really have a, a clear process for taking new testimony from the opponent. And so that's, you know, on, in general, we're looking to avoid just getting buried in material from opponents. But specifically, we should have a, a way to let them in because if we have the public hearing, say, on September 1 and then the fourth meeting on the topic is on February 1, obviously we've been having a discussion. And, and I don't really have an answer to this, but the, we really should figure out a way to allow uh, opposition. And maybe even the answer comes to the point of naming parties as if it were an appeal as the part process is going on, because the petitioner is a named party, and the opponents are always just like whoever comes to speak. So in a case that's obviously going to go on for a long time, as the Albion Quarry did, and as the potential revocation in Deerfield did, we might even want to somehow designate parties like uh, for the opposition or allow them to designate a leader so that we could allow them to rebut at a work meeting and not have them accuse us of working too closely with the petitioner at the expense of the opponent. And I personally fell into that trap having made, made a remark about trying to work with the applicant to make this a, an approvable application where the opponents felt, well, that's not your job. Your job is to make a fair decision. And if, if he submitted a flawed application, he usually doesn't like fail on his own merits, which I think is sort of foolish because you shouldn't just say, ha-ha, gotcha, you did a bad job. We should be able to ask questions and improve the application, but we should kind of build into our process a way for the opponents to have a, a seat at the table as well. So that was a bit of a ramble, but it sort of goes to chopping. <coughs> Would you like to work on paragraph F? <laughs> yeah, I, I could do that. I think my thoughts were developing even as I was babbling. Uh, any questions or concerns about any other lines 1, 2, or A through E? No, I think staff has done a very good job mm -hmm. of this. I, I like what I see here. Okay, so some wordsmithing and clarification, that'd be accurate. Okay, on F, um, we only have two more meetings this year. That is correct. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's time sensitive. We've, we've had this correct. process for a long, long time, so when we fix it, we should, no, I just, we should get it right. It's, uh, this is our third meeting. We're talking about it. so that's that's where I'm coming from. So when oh, you, let's when not you, just talk about it every other day. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. That's that's where I'm coming from. This right. So before we do it again, let's have let's some, have a yeah, great comments on it. More specific. Thank you. Anything else on this? Um, changed our purpose. Changed our rules. Okay. Seeing none. I'm making sure I don't miss anything. 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. And we are adjourned. I just got a couple things for you to sign. Okay. Thank you.